All right, it's Orange Shirt Day. Um, I'm going to just create a quick video uh, explaining how um, to make patterns in Photoshop and how to make them repeat on uh, an interesting looking diagonal. So I'm going to uh, start in Photoshop here. I'm going to say new and uh, I'm going to show you what, what I mean by a diagonal pattern first. So you can define patterns in Photoshop. It comes with some predefined patterns. See this paint bucket tool? I'm going to choose that. Normally uh, when you use the paint bucket tool you, you can fill it with a, a color. So you can choose your color here and then fill it in. But instead of that uh, a color you can use a pattern to fill it in too. And it comes with some pretty ugly looking patterns. Predefined patterns here. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. Fit to screen. So here are some of its predefined patterns. They're, they're more textures than anything. Looks a bit like static or... Anyway, um, we're going to try and create a pattern that looks like this. So you can see uh, there are hearts and they repeat on a diagonal. It's really easy to make um, sort of like a random pattern uh, that, you know, repeats in squares as it moves across the screen. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do nice diagonal patterns. So we're going to start by creating a new space to work in. We're going to create that space um, as being perfectly square. I'm going to use 200 by 200 pixels. Um, the resolution doesn't really matter. My background contents will be white. I'm going to say OK. Uh, and now I'm going to zoom in maybe to 500% on my screen here just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, and we're going to add in some shapes. So. I like to start by creating guides for myself um, so that I can tell what I'm doing. I've got my rulers on here, but um, I'm going to create, and we can create guidelines like this as well, but it's a little bit hard sometimes to figure out where the halfway mark is. So what we're going to do instead is I know the space I've just created is 200 by 200 pixels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my marquee tool. My marquee tool is what I use to select stuff that I want to manipulate. Um, I'm going to use my marquee tool and I'm going to say that I want to choose a fixed size, which is 100 by 100 pixels. You can literally just type in this box 100 px means pixels, 100 px, hit enter. And now whenever I click, it chooses um, a space that's exactly 100 by 100. So I'm going to start by clicking up here in the top left corner. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my paint bucket. And I'm not going to fill it with a pattern. I'm going to fill it with just a color. The foreground color, let's just choose a light gray. And the only reason we're doing this is so that we have some guidelines so we can see exactly where the center is, which is here. And I'm going to select um, down here on the bottom right, and it'll do the same thing. I'll select this area, and I'll fill that with the same color. I could fill it with a different color if I wanted to, but I don't need to. So this is our background layer that we've done this on. And now I'm going to go back here uh, to my marquee tool, rectangular marquee tool, and under style, we had chosen chosen fixed size. I'm going to go back to normal, and I'm going to just click up here again so that my marquee goes away. It might be a little hard to see on the video, but this is a light gray. We've got white and light gray. All right, so if I want to create a diagonal pattern, I'm going to use these as guides <clears throat> to do that. So I'm going to choose a custom shape, and I'm going to go up here um, to my once I've chosen custom shape here, you push and hold down, you can choose rectangles and circles and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to choose a custom shape to make it more interesting. And I showed you an example with a heart, but we don't have to use a heart. We can use any of these custom shapes. Incidentally, um, you'll see I have maybe more custom shapes than you have. If you click the little gear here, you can just choose all. And it just reloads this with all the custom shapes. So um, you can use a heart. You could use a cloud, whatever you want. It's 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 better if you can choose a custom shape where it's easier to tell where the center is. Um, maybe let's lose this, use this blob. Blob 2, it says. And we can choose the fill color over here. So let's make our blob maybe a blue color. I'm going to create a new layer down here. Um, now, by default, it usually just automatically creates a new layer when you start drawing shapes. Uh, but I'm going to specify new layer just in case. You can see our fill color for that shape is blue. The stroke, which means the outline is none or nothing. And that's what I want as well. And then I'm just going to drag out 
a blobby shape. Now if I hold the shift button while I do that, it'll keep the aspect ratio uh, the same, which means it's not going to stretch it one way or the other. And I'm going to treat the center of, I'm going to use this to, sorry, I'm going to use these lines that I've created here to figure out where the center is. And I'm going to say that looks like it's more or less in the center of the shape. Is it exactly? Maybe. Move it up or down a little bit. I might want to move it up or down a little bit and just decide that where this blobby shape starts to curve back up again and where there are no blue pixels down here. I might decide that that's going to be my middle and I'll show you why. That's, I know it's not the middle but I might decide that's going to be my middle and I'll show you why in a second. So there's my shape. I'm going to zoom out a bit. I'm going to duplicate that shape. So I just right click down here where it says shape one, right click and choose duplicate layer. And now I have something called shape one copy. I can use my tool up here. This is the move tool. If I click that and click this new duplicated shape, I can drag it around. And what I'm going to try and do is set it exactly up here at the top right so that it's cut off exactly where we define the center to be for this shape. So I can see from this guide, if I were to zoom in and show you, this guide that I created here, we can see there's no, there's a little bit of blue here and then no blue down here. So I'm going to say, and it looks like we're cutting it off right about here. So I'm going to eyeball that up here. Oops, sorry, zoom back out. There we go. Zoom out. There we go. And uh, I'll try and put that exactly in the same spot. Now I can move this. And then I can also nudge it up and down with my arrow keys. So you can see there's still just a tiny bit of blue showing here. Nudge it up one more and there's not. And then we can sort of see that that's more or less in the right spot. Okay, so what we can imagine, we can see one quarter of this blobby shape. That means there's a quarter here, a quarter here, and a quarter here still. So we need to take those quarters and stick them exactly in the right position at all four corners to create the diagonal. So I'm going to duplicate my layer again here. I'm going to say OK. And now my duplicate sits on top of this one. Again, I can use my move tool. I can use my arrows if I want and nudge it over pixel by pixel. If I hold shift, that goes a little faster until I get close. And then what I want to do is make sure that I'm cutting it off just in the right spot here again. So you can see there's one, two, over, and that should be more or less the same. Now what I can do is actually I can select both of these layers at the same time just by um, doing an apple, holding down the, my command button, sorry, uh, while I select both of them, or uh, I think I could do it with shift too. Let me check it out. So I click the top one, click shift, click the second one. There you go. And I have them both selected. I can right click and duplicate those layers, and it's going to duplicate both of them at the same time. I already have my move tool selected, and now I can drag them both down at the same time. You can see that orange, or sorry, that purple line shows me that they're lined up perfectly with um, the ones above them. And now I'll drag this down. And just like before, I'll, I'll nudge it down bit by bit. Remember we stopped this one where the blue was just showing. So I want to bring these blue pixels. Let me zoom in so I can see. You can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to bring those blue pixels down so they're just touching the bottom there. So I'm just going to nudge them down. And now they're just touching. It's going to be the same with this one here. I'll nudge it up again so you can see there are only white pixels down there. And we're done. So I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to turn off my background layer, my guide layer. These um, gray check this gray check checkerboard pattern means that this is transparent and that's fine I can make a transparent uh, pattern that's gonna look cool I'm gonna make sure that nothing is selected with my marquee tool because when we define our pattern if something is selected with a marquee tool um, it only includes what's inside the marquee in the pattern so I'm gonna unselect everything and I'm gonna do this edit define pattern I can call this, uh, I'm going to call it blue 
blobby pattern. I'm going to say OK. So what do we do with it? Let's go back here to this uh, white page that we defined at the start. And I can go to my fill tool. It's um, right now it's on foreground color. And I click there and choose pattern. I go into my pattern palettes to see all the different patterns I've defined. And I click my blue blobby one like this. So it's thinking maybe it's going to crash, which will make a make for a bit of a boring video. There we go. Nope, it selected it. And then I will click. And you can see we have a blue blobby pattern. Now, it's actually a little bit faint, and that's because up here the fill opacity is set to 10%. So that's something interesting to think about too, is when you um, fill, you can choose how much it fills by changing that opacity up there. So that's how you create a pattern, and that's how you create a pattern that um, repeats on the diagonal instead of repeating uh, in perfect rows and columns. Thank you.